Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Under the Hood, a psychology podcast that uses science to explain everyday issues. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, chronic stress and autoimmune disease and how the two may be correlated. Right, so let's talk vocabulary. Uh, well, in order to understand what chronic stress is and how it might relate to autoimmune disease, we first need to understand what's a stressor. In short form summary, a stressor is any type of stimuli that disrupts your body's homeostasis or your perfect balance for optimal bodily functioning. There are three different types of stressors. There's acute physical stress, chronic physical stress, and psychological and social disruptions. Today, we're going to be mostly focusing on that psychological and social disruptions. Interestingly, it's pretty much unique to humans and social primates. Other animals in the animal kingdom don't seem to deal with this particular stressor, and they don't seem to struggle with it as much as humans do. Now here's a key point to the topic we're going to be discussing today. While our bodies might be dealing with three distinct types of stressors, we respond the same way every time. Our body has one biological stress response, not three. This means that your body's response, regardless if it's in danger or not, it's going to act like it is. Now, I'm not going to go too deep into detail about the biological aspects of the stress response as it's a lot of vocabulary and we don't have enough time. However, I will give you all the quick highlights. As a general summary, your stress response sort of looks like your body preparing for life or death situations. It's fight or flight. It's the rapid mobilization of your body's energy in order to try and protect you. Oftentimes, this means that your heart rate increases and that your ability to intake oxygen increases. Unfortunately, it also means that your body starts to deprioritize things that might help you more in the long term, but not so much in the short term. This looks like your digestion, your cellular growth, your libido, and your immune system all becoming significantly less important. I mean, yeah, sure, disease will kill you, but that lion over there will kill you much faster. And that is the priority. Now, here's where it gets interesting. See, because your body doesn't have a different stress response for every stressful scenario, what ends up happening is you end up having the same stress response for every kind of problem. And well, in the modern world, we aren't generally dealing with a whole lot of lions, but we are dealing with a lot of psychological and social stressors. And so what it ends up looking like is you end up having this kind of stress response you might need in order to run away from a predatory animal in response to say bills or piles of homework. So now that we've sort of covered what chronic stress is and you know what a stress response may look like on the body, I want to start delving into the relationship between chronic stress and the immune system. So the first thing I wanna bring up right away is Hans Seeley. He was an endocrinologist in the 1930s and he was doing a study on lab rats. And as he was doing this study, he was mishandling these rats and dropping them and chasing them and really just stressing them the heck out. And in particular, you know, with a study like this, you have to test on them regularly, which means they were chronically being exposed to the stressful experience of being handled by Hans. And what Hans began to notice was that regardless of his test group or his control group, they both started developing all sorts of nasty diseases such as ulcers and, you know, more chronic health conditions that simply couldn't be explained. So he decided to drop his current experiment and start another one surrounding stress. And what he found is that rats who were more chronically stressed out, chronically mishandled, began to develop things like peptic ulcers, enlarged adrenal glands, and shrunken immune immune tissue. In summary, these rats were developing chronic health issues and autoimmune diseases simply because they were a little too stressed out for too long of a period of time. It wasn't like he was injecting these rats with chemicals that heightened these problems. He was simply mishandling them to the point that they could no longer take it, and their bodies began to show signs of wear and tear. I mean, when your body's immune defense system is constantly being deprioritized due to the fact that you're stressed out, it's no wonder that your immune system begins to lose its mind. 
And this association between autoimmune and stress gets even more concerning when you consider the fact that autoimmune is oftentimes genetically inherited. Um, consider things like the rat cherry blossom study, in which a group of rats were conditioned to associate the smell of cherry blossoms with pain and fear, and how that association traveled three generations down without the second or third generation ever being exposed to cherry blossoms in that way. Or perhaps you might lean more historical with the Dutch famine of 1944, in which um, several thousand people suffered a mass famine and died, but the survivors had a much higher risk for metabolic syndrome. The evidence is clear. Regardless if it's historical or tested in a lab, the correlation between chronic stress, genetics, and autoimmune disease is blatantly clear. But the biggest question still remains. What are we supposed to do about it? I mean, we all fairly well understand the relationship between chronic stress and autoimmune disease and how the two are genetically passed down, but what are we supposed to do about it? It's not like you can just get up one day and remove all of your chronic stressors. You live in the modern world. They're not going to go away. And we unfortunately can't change our biological response to stress. So what's the alternative? Well, for today, I'm going to be bringing uh, Madonna Konkin on the show. She is a woman in her 70s who has dealt with lupus since she was 40 years old while raising four children and teaching at a local high school. And I'm going to be getting her perspective on autoimmune stress and how to cope. Hi, Madonna. Hello. Um, I guess my first question for you is going to be, uh, what autoimmune disorder do you suffer from? I suffer from systemic lupus erythematosus. It's an autoimmune illness that where your body can attack its own tissue and itself because your anti-nuclear antibodies are dysfunctioning and they will go after you when they're upset. When I got diagnosed with lupus, I was 49 years old and I was under a lot of stress at that time. I had a husband with diabetes and um, diabetic retinopathy and heart problems and I had four children and I was teaching school full time and doing educational consultant work around the nation. So I think ultimately when you're prone to have something like that, a high stress life will cause it to, to develop. It's like when you have an autoimmune illness like lupus, you can think about you have an envelope in your life and your envelope is a certain size and you can only put so much in it. And if you overfill it and overstuff it, it will tear. And you know, um, continuing that envelope metaphor, do you notice that you often feel like you have to overstuff your envelope? Well, life demands puts demands on you. And what uh, one thing people don't understand is that there's a continuum and there's good stress on one side and then there's disruptive, sad, miserable stress on the other. Like fun is can be very stressful. And so, but with lupus, I have to try to really make wise decisions and keep it in the middle of the continuum and not overstuff my envelope and have a tear. <laughs> Many people don't consider positive stress as stressors, you know? I know. Uh, many times when, you know, like you're doing stress tests or you're talking about chronic stress, people will bring up things like their career or school uh -huh. or anything like that, uh -huh. and they don't realize positive stress is oh, it, also it, an effect. It, it, it is very much so. And if that's a sad part of living with an illness like this because you have to give up things you really love. You you mentioned that you are the mother of four children mm -hmm. and um, two of which are twins. Mm -hmm. um, how would you say that parenting has um, affected your health stress-wise? Well, it's very, very good in some ways. I love having my children and my family. I mean, it. of course, anybody in your family, your children especially, it affects your health because you're a little bit stressed about what they're going through. We're also studied enough on all of it and aware that we have to be, you know, we do a lot of meditation and we're aware that you have to control your mind and the mind-body connection, we all understand and realize how very important it is to not do that, you know, to, to not 
throw it back and forth to where it makes it even worse. You know, you stay on the positive side and that helps. So that level of kind of mindfulness is what My really keeps exactly. keeps things peaceful. Yes. Okay. You know, that story, it makes me think of how um, different American culture can be in terms of how we view our relationship to work and self-worth. Mm -hmm. um, you know, many times um, people who have autoimmune issues or have chronic health issues and require rest are often considered lazy I or know. shameful. Yeah. The criticism is a very real thing. And... Um, as a hardworking, per I mean, I grew up in a, in a in European descent with almost guilt that if you don't work and overachieve, you're lazy and you're worthless. I was still an overachiever, but I had to do it. One of the advice they give you with lupus is to have a job and schedule where you are your own gauge as to when you can do what. And when it's time to stop, you stop. And that's hard as a high school teacher because the bell rings and the next class comes and there you go. I spent a great deal of time thinking things over and I'm pretty good at sitting down and explaining to people, this is why I do this this way. Even my own husband when this happened. It's okay if I rest. Understand that's important. It just was to the point, I mean, it affects you cognitively too. And my strength was going so down from pushing myself like that, that's not fair to the students either. So I went to a four day week and then finally I retired and I told, I wrote a letter to Mr. Diller and said, I love it here, I don't wanna leave, but I'm going to leave Kelly Walsh, I'm going to stop being a human doing and I'm going to become a human being. And that's, that was okay. I've, I've had a wonderful journey and I've learned a lot about the human condition. And I still stay busy and do a lot more so than a lot of people, but I can't be superwoman anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think all your life when you have um, circumstances that are difficult, you become a stronger, wiser person. And that enables you to help other people to be stronger, wiser people. Mentally tell yourself, I'm not lazy, I'm not bad, I can't help this, but I'm gonna do the best I can with what I have to work with.